Hello, it is Sunday, March 6th, 2022. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. Seems like the audio quality wasn't too terrible. It's definitely not what I would what I would like it to be. Still, still on the remote setup, so hopefully you're finding it all right. Uh, in any case, this is a Sunday puzzle, so a big grid. I hope you're hope you're settled in for that. I'm going to try and solve it slightly quickly if I if I can. We'll see how that goes. This edition of the Daily Solve is brought to you by Trash Snack, Bradley Pirtle, and as always, the inestimable Hood Monster. So thank you so much to the three of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign. And if you'd like to join their ranks, you can do so at patreon.com slash daily solve. And if you back the Patreon campaign at any level, uh, well, if you back as a as a benefactor, you get that Daily Solve Let's Check the Crosses mug. But if you back it at any of the levels, you get access to all of the bonus solves that have gone up to date, including the new ones each week. And so yesterday I put up the Boss Words Spring Themeless League practice puzzle. And today, um, I'm not sure, maybe by the time you see this, or if not soon thereafter, will be the Boss Words um, uh, preseason puzzle. And uh, those were both recorded on my home setup the other day. So better audio quality if you're you're, um, uh, over on that Patreon feed. And also better image quality. I seem to be in and out of darkness perpetually with this this camera and this lighting, I suppose. Not much I can do about that either, unfortunately. But let's let's move on to the puzzle. It's a Sunday puzzle. And oh, I didn't think to research the constructors today. I'm sorry about that. Um, but this puzzle is entitled Parlor Trick. It is a Sunday puzzle, so there is some kind of theme, and presumably it will it will relate to this title. It was constructed by Matthew Stock and Will Nettiger. Now, I will say that despite not having looked them up before starting today's puzzle, I do recognize those names. So um, experienced crossword constructors, I think we can we can at least assume that. And it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. Are we ready to start? I would say yes. So let's go ahead past this newfangled start screen here. All right. Bon, ah, look at that. Bon appétit, perhaps? Once again, as with yesterday, a a French answer. And I am indeed in France at the moment, so very appropriate. Home of St. Clair. Not sure. Is St. Clair also of Assisi, like Francis? I don't know. It sort of fits the, (laughs) fits the, um, the, um, Crosses. Boy, I can't think. Actually, speaking of crosses, sorry, I should have taken a moment to look at this grid. We have quite a few unchecked squares. This is a very interesting looking puzzle, actually. I I don't know why I didn't stop to look. It's incredibly strange. It's symmetrical about a vertical axis, which is relatively unusual, and there's a snaking pattern of circles winding their way down the puzzle. So I'm very curious what that will be. They Presumably, will spell a long word or a phrase. We'll just have to see. So, what are here's an here's an unchecked square. What is this clue? Save it for a rainy day. Um, a tarp, perhaps a tarpaulin. You may put it over your outdoor furniture, maybe something like that. I'm not sure. I'll need more. <clears throat> All right, four down is a compound clue. It says name that's six down backwards. A little, <laughs> this word, if if this indeed is correct, then uh, we know the last, these will be the opposite of one another. So this will go here and the E will go here, if you see what I mean, because we're reversing them. And this looks correct. La Corse, par exemple. So another French bit, this would be referring to Corsica, but in French. So Il, Napoleon was from Corsica. And, uh, and then Eli is il for island backwards. So look at that. Got some early fill. Donna Blank, member of Bill Clinton's cabinet. Oops, sorry about that siren. Sorry about that French siren. Uh, it seems a little bit less noisy in general than it was when I recorded yesterday, but uh, obviously I can't. Can't stop the sirens. Uh, biting writings. I don't know. It'll end with an S, though, presumably. And what about this Bre- brewery employee? A taster, perhaps? Why a brewery in particular and not any food production site? 
Um, what is this? Oh, right, biting writings. Oh, let's just keep going through the acrosses. See you later. Adios, perhaps? Let's just try it and and uh, check the crosses. Comb through. Bubs. Bubs. I assume that's a... I think this is in the sense, I assume, of the informal term of address. Term of address. You might say, hey there, Bubs, something like that. Is that what this is? Or is there another meaning of that? I'm not sure. Workers on vacation initials. I don't know. Maybe this isn't adios. Actually, I disagree. Okay, I don't think this is correct. Let's uh, see you later. Um, I'm off. I'm out. Does I'm work with either of these? Bubs. Max? <laughs> hey, bub. Hey, Mac. And then the plural of each of them. I don't know if that makes sense. Comb through. Inspect. I don't know. I mean, it could be any number of things, probably. Let's let's remove this all. I'm not thrilled about it. <clears throat> it covers more than 30% of the Earth's surface. It'll be interesting, whatever it is. Uh, oops. Oh, the spacebar doesn't switch direction. I think I need to turn on that option, perhaps. Um, pressing the spacebar, yes, should toggle between across and down. That is my preferred, my preferred method. Okay. They might be pregnant. Pregnant pauses, perhaps. Does that help here? It covers more than 30% of the Earth's surface. And desert whose soil has been compared to that of Mars. And convinces a customer to pay more. Upsells. There we go. There's something. Organic energy compound for short. Mi casa es su casa. My home is your home. All right. So that doesn't tell us anything particularly about this unchecked square, this theme, which pres I'm presuming will be related to the theme. Maybe we'll spell something in the unchecked squares. I don't know. Part of a cold compress. Ice, maybe? Become clear. Oh, ah, here we go. Here's This will be related to the theme. Become clear or make like the object represented by the circle letters. Become clear. Something to do with unwinding or something like that. Thread a needle. I don't know. So then my response was, I don't know. Hereditary divisions. What is this? Covers more than 30% of the Earth's surface. Oh, the Pacific Ocean. That makes perfect sense. All right. Um, desert whose soil has been compared to that of Mars. This one I really feel as though I should be able to see based on the starting letter and the crosses. Sorry about that. I'll, I'll feel silly when I get it eventually, I'm sure. Organic energy compound, for short. Um, ah. Become clear. Right. Fall into place? Does that work? It, it fits. Let's try it. So then my response was, I was, past tense. What is this? I, hmm, hereditary divisions. Oh, castes, perhaps. I was thinking hereditary from a genetic sense, but this means hereditary in a, in a social sense, I think. You might inherit your caste in a caste-based society, because, um, which, I mean, I guess you could argue that's sort of genetic, but it's not intrinsically genetic. It's just socially determined. Hoppin. Oh, it could be lit in the modern sense. How about that? Actor Baron Holtz of the Mindy Project. Well, I blank E could be Ike. It's pretty plausible. So then my response was, oh, I see. I'm like, right, in the very modern idiomatic sense. So I'm like, let's solve a crossword. You might, one might say. All right. Neighbors of exclamation marks. Ones, their neighbors on the keyboard in the sense that they share a key. And in that sense, you could say they're neighbors in the, in the sense that uh, two people living in flats in the same house are neighbors. Oh, so what is this? Desert whose soil has been compared to Mars, 
Do I just not know this? And organic energy compound for short. Um, well, that's very frustrating. Uh, I don't know that I'm actually familiar with this, which is frustrating because it means I'm going to have, I'm going to have a, a, um, a bit of the grand war. I'm going to have to guess. Uh, Ayakama, Atacama. Atacama sounds plausible, possibly familiar. I don't know. That's very frustrating. Let's keep going. Uh, breakfast treat. A, a muff, a scone. Workers on vacation initials. Actually, I disagree. Bubs. Maybe that is Max. That would be funny. Comb through. Dis something. I don't, I'm not certain about scone, but I'll leave it in there for now. Nickel found in a pocket, say. Nickel found in a pocket, say. Ore. You could find a pocket of ore, a sort of vein of ore, if you're mining. Loyalty that's pledged. In the U.S. university fraternity system, people pledge to fraternities, frats? I don't think that really fits the, the, the way the clue is phrased, though. Um, cosmetic that can be applied with a brush. Sorry, I'm, I should just go back to the, the regular order of clues and start solving ordinarily here. Do, do a first pass, at least. Or so could be ish. Five or so, five-ish. Much of a delivery person's income could be tips, depending, I suppose, on how they're where they live, how it's uh, regulated. Make the choice could be opts. Actually, I disagree. Well, I don't know what the first word is here. I mean, it could be um, no, or... I, I mean, I'm, not, I'm just not sure what the first word before the no is, now that I see that it is a no. Rococo painter of allegory of the planets and continents. Well... Unlike this, I don't know, possibly Atacama, I hope I recognize this when I see it. I feel really silly for not being very confident about that. I think it's Atacama, but I wish I were completely certain. Physicist Newton. Well, this is presumably Isaac Newton, unless there's some very clever misdirection going on. Suffix with official. Uh, why isn't this obvious? Officialist? Officialism? Officialese? Is that referring to sort of professional jargon, perhaps? Officialist to the most official? Pretty sure that's not an official word. Come through. Blank K. Smith, poet who won a Pulitzer for Life on Mars. Um, sorry, let's go back to here. Prearranged could be set. Oh, maybe St. Clair of Assisi. I think that actually is correct. So that was my guess earlier, but when I think about it, I think I do actually recognize that. That person, that saint. Classic Camaro. Oh, this is IROC, I'm pretty certain. I don't remember what it stands for or, or anything, but I think this is a, a variant of Chevrolet Camaro that's I don't know, modified to be faster <laughs> in some way. Something like that. Anyway, a Starfleet weapon. This would be from Star Trek, right? It's a phaser, I think. And biting writings. Oh, satires. That surely is the case. And election night calculation. Or what's traced by the circle letters. Interestingly. Interesting, sorry. Path to success or victory. Probably victory. Path to victory is what you would say. Um, so that's what I think this is referring to in election coverage when, based on the returns that have come in so far, pundits will, will plot a path to victory and say, well, if the, if they win this area and this area and this area, then they could still pull it off, that sort of thing. Oh, is this going to be all O's? Is that what this is? There's three O's. It seems quite unlikely that would just, does that work here? Workers on vacation. It does. <laughs> Oh, 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 out of office. Oh, look at this. So I can go ahead and fill in the whole thing, I'm pretty sure. Look at that. That is satisfying. Look at all these, look at all these cells I'm getting immediately. 
without needing to work for them at all. Oh, that was great. So it's under at on a keyboard. Oh, and that's two. So there's a little counterpart to um, our exclamation point and one neighbors. We have two and the, uh, the at sign. Well, that was great. That was extremely enjoyable. <laughs> it's very nice to get to fill in a bunch of letters without needing to solve any clues. Okay. Um, see you later. So it could be I'm off or I'm out. Actually, I disagree. Oh, and if it were I'm out, this could be um, no, or uh, no, I suppose. And if this were a T, oh, right, the Rococo painter. I, do I know this person? Um, maybe I don't. Come through. Now this, I feel as though I'm just blanking out. That's very frustrating. And what is this? Bubs. Oh, it could, maybe it is Max. That's funny. What a strange thing. You don't usually pluralize those words. I mean, bubs can be pluralized, but I think it's, generally speaking, it's not really pluralized. You're still referring to a single person who say, hey, bubs. I don't think if you said, hey, bubs, you would be addressing three different bubs, three instances of bub. Um, but that's sort of what's implied by Max, isn't it? I'm not really sure what that means. But in any case, I think that's the answer. So see you later. It could be I'm out and comb through. Oh, oh, it is inspect. Didn't I say that before? Right. And then what is this? Oh, Na Naomi Klein, who wrote the bestseller, This Changes Everything, Capitalism Versus the Climate. So this is indeed um, no. And here, yeah, I suppose I don't know this painter. That's frustrating. Um, too many of those today so far. Save it for a rainy day. Oh, Oh, right. It is tarp, I suppose. Never mind. I thought that looks like it could be tire. How does that work? Oh, right. There's something I already guessed earlier, and it, it fits even more closely now. And what was this? Oh, the brewery em employee. Maybe it is taster. And then what is this? Donna? Is it Donna Shalala? A member of Bill Clinton's cabinet? I'm actually not certain. But that looks right. And then suffix with official would be officialese. And blank K. Smith. Tracy K. Smith, poet who won a Pulitzer for Life on Mars. Well, fine then. Um, you won? I would have assumed you win, but I need those O's. Let's, I'm not confident about this. Let's check the crosses. Hubbub? No, it's not you won. Because a hubbub, I would assume, is a, a, uh, oh, well, actually, I was going to say a do, as in without further ado, without further hubbub, I suppose you could say, but I'm not necessarily certain. Um, the Lord in the Hebrew Bible. Oh, uh, Adorai. Why can't I think of this? That's very frustrating as well. I'm really not having a great day when it comes to the old brain, am I? Question from the befuddled. How? Age beautifully, informally. Oh, glow up. I, I see this phrase a lot more in the last decade or so. And... Cosmetic that can be applied with a brush. Oh, gloss, perhaps. Loyalty that's pledged. And stuffed one's face. So ate a lot. Loyalty that's pledged. Hmm, what is this? Are these all correct? Make the choice. Opts, right. Nickel. Uh, so what is it? True loyalty that's pledged. Sorry. <clears throat> uh, troth. Sort of want it to be that. I hope there will be some way to sort of check these unchecked squares with some element of the of the theme. Uh, all right, where was I? I'm quite certain the second letter of the Lord in the Hebrew Bible is D, but uh, well, fine then. 
That I'm not certain about at all. Um, extra bonus. How about that? Um, giraffe's closest living relative. Oh, a copy. All right, this is looking what I thought. Adonai is what I thought. I'm sure I'm saying that poorly. I'm sorry. But this is what I thought the Lord was in the Hebrew Bible. So, oh, one moment. I pulled this. Oh, no. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, hubbub, ado. Got to have qu quite a few <laughs> things to check here. Oh, well, fine. Then could be, yeah, okay. All right. Yeah, okay. I see it. Um, so this does look like Tracy, doesn't it? And big rigs. Trucks or something. La Dolce Vita. It's a Fellini film, right? And lemon-like fruit, a citron, which possibly predates the lemon, if I recall correctly. Pink pad on a paw in slang. Um, on an animal's paw, presumably. A cat's paw, perhaps. Question regarding a mic. Is it on... Looks right. One of the Blues Brothers, Elwood Blues, and Jake Blues, his brother, from the film The Blues Brothers. Cuss Out, which also derives, I think, from SNL, as does uh, Wayne's World, as was indicated on the crossword the other day. Cuss Out, Swear At. Big Brother's creator was George Orwell in 1984, the novel. Bump on a Frog would be a wart. Start of a Simple Request. And Syrian city with a historic citadel, Aleppo. Move shakily is to daughter, I suppose, to daughter around. Warm up act is the opener. Rolled one's R's say, rolled one's R's is trilled. Start of a simple request. All I ask, all I ask is to figure out some of these final unfilled cells. Deb Blank, Secretary of the Interior, starting in 2021. Oh, yeah, I recognize this name, but I can't think what the first letter is. Nayland? N? Is it? A, no, that doesn't look right, does it? Um, you're just assuming. Exams for some future clerks. A uh, law clerk, so it could be LCATs, or no, LSATs, law school, admission, test, uh, more wacky, could be sillier, West Coast News Initials, the LA Times, perhaps, LAT, Los Angeles Times, showed off one's pipes, you could have sung, showed off your vocal cords. You're just assuming that's a guess? I don't know. I probably shouldn't go that quite that far. What about this? Love cover covers a multitude of sins? Harry Styles' tune about a woman who lives in daydreams. Oh, no. I don't have the slightest clue. Uh, it takes blades to blades. A mower takes a blade to blades of grass. Okay, we've skipped quite a bunch at this point, so let's let's go back. Lack of engagement could be boredom. And UK award bestowed by the Queen could be an OBE, an Order of the British Empire uh, recognition. Given during the Queen's Honours Awards or the Queen's Birthday Awards. Uh, well, I guess those are, that's the Queen's Honours as well. But there are a few different occasions during the year when the Queen gives those out. Although it's on behalf of the government, generally, as opposed to her personal choice. All right, above criticism. Um, oh, sacred. If something is sacred, it's above criticism, right? Like a sacred cow, you could say. Uh, big rigs. Tandems? Big bike rigs in that case? I'm not sure. Um... Pink pad on a paw in slang. Toe, uh, in slang. I don't know, is it toesies or something? But that would be plural. And this is not. Roly-poly, scientifically. I'm not sure about that. What 10 can mean? It can mean two in binary? Um... 
or eight in octal, I suppose, or any number of other numbers in any other number systems, what 10 can mean. Oh, October, of course, the month. That was simpler than I was making it. Apologies. Um, blank tort, Austrian cake, and linguistic unit. And here we have opposite of neath, could be o'er, so over or beneath, elided in a poetic sort of way. Regarding, could be as for, as for these extra cells, I'm really going to need to fill them in at some point. Hang out on a line, could be you could dry clothes on a line. Oh, isopod, roly-poly scientifically, that sounds right, actually. And linguistic unit, um, linguistic unit. Oh, phoneme, so a, 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 a unit of verbalized sound. I'm sure there's a better way to say that. Pink pad on a paw in slang. Toe bead? Toe be uh, bean? Oh, I see what's going on. These, um, this is a pachinko machine. The, the grid is illustrating a pachinko machine, and the unchecked cells are fortunately checked by spelling the word pachinko. Where's my mouse cursor? Here it is. So we have P, that's the, um, the game that's particularly po um, popular in some Asian countries where um, the, the, the ball falls down the machine and bounces around and then lands in these slots. I mean, very much how it's illustrated in this crossword. So P-A-C-H-I-N-K-O. So indeed, this was troth. And this is a toe bean, I suppose. I don't think I'm familiar with that, that slang. And what is this? Ross Perot founded it in 1995. So Ross Perot was an independent presidential candidate who ran a number of times under the Reform Party banner that he founded. And they cast lots. Oh, rods. <laughs> they cast lots, as in they cast very frequently, lots of times, as opposed to casting lots to in a random drawing, for instance. Uh, so fishing rods. It's blown in the winds would be an oboe, an instrument. So it's, it's blown, played in a wind section in the orchestra. Airport with a Harvey Milk terminal. Um, SFO, San Francisco International Airport, has a, has a, a terminal named after Harvey Milk, the, um, uh, uh, the uh, San Francisco-based um, gay rights activist who uh, was a uh, San Francisco city councilor and was was murdered, um, assassinated along with San Francisco Mayor Dan Moscone. All right, something's essential aspect, or what's spelled out by letters in this puzzle's eight cups? Uh, name of the game. Ah, yes. <laughs> I'm glad I found that right after, almost immediately after unpicking pachinko. So there we have it, the name of the game. And of course, these O's falling down represent the pachinko ball. So I, I right, I forgot to, to look at, to think about that as well. And the pachinko ball is, is winding around the pachinko machine and falling all the way down into this last, last little slot at the bottom. This is very clever. Harry Styles tune about a woman who lives in daydreams. Is it she? And then love covers a multitude of sins. That all looks right. Here we have, you're just assuming, okay, let's, let's go back to, let's go back to marching through the clues. Lawn material. It could be sod, cooked with hot seasoning. Lines of notes. Could be a staff, a musical staff, with many notes inscribed upon it. Sight line. Uh, 2011 film for which Octavia Spencer won a Best Supporting Actress Oscar. Oh, The Help? That sounds familiar. Prefix with lithic, neolithic, so uh, stone, uh, big stone construction. I guess it doesn't always need to be big. Although I think the lithic sort of implies that, right? Anyway, not against the rules. Could be all okay. Not sure. Let's check the cross. Like the consonants T and D. And sight line. Here we have cooked with hot seasoning. Blank Lodge. Rowing machine informally. <clears throat> um, 
I'm going to know this when I see it. I can't remember what, what a rowing machine is called. It does start with an E, but it's not very impressive given it's written right there, isn't it? Event for moving vehicles. Event for moving vehicles. A car sale? So in this sense, moving meaning we're moving product, we're selling a great deal. Uh, comedian Margaret Cho. All right. Well, there's that. Actress Tatum. Oh, Tatum O'Neill. Is that is that an actress? I sort of recognize that name. Organization that sets permissible exposure limits. OSHA. The Workplace Safety uh, Agency. The Federal United States Workplace Safety Agency. Perhaps that seems pretty plausible. Eject forcefully. And deal. Super. Mm. Here we have foolish sort. And what is this very, very long entry here? Oh, karaoke instruction. Or what to do Start at starting at 10 down. Oh, we're going to follow the ball, follow the bouncing ball. <laughs> Look at that. What a clever puzzle. Follow, just a, a good Sunday theme, right? It's sort of a it's a fun theme. It's not incredibly complicated, but it's fun. It's illustrated in the puzzle. We have several different clues that tie into it in in funny ways that relate to the illustration. It's just a nice it's a, it's, a, it's a nice good Sunday Sunday solve, I would say. It is helpful to be familiar with the concept of pachinko. I mean, that helped me with at least one tricky cross. Okay, sight line cooked with hot seasoning. Why do I not see what this is? Not against the rules. Blank Lodge. Rowing machine. Oh, er, is it? It's an erg something. Yeah, uh, ergometer or something. Ah, I sort of remember. It's sort of in my brain somewhere, but I can't quite. I can't quite pull it out. It's not making it through the pachinko machine of my cluttered mind and and making it all the way down to my mouth. That was. I'm not thrilled about that image. Sorry. All right. Eject forcefully. Why do I not see what that is either? Super. This doesn't look great. Maybe this isn't OSHA. Zoo animal whose name rhymes with zoo. Um. G well, what starts with G and rhymes with zoo? Oh, new. G N U, perhaps. Gnu. Add salt to, say. Into really small pieces. Maybe it's not bouncing. I don't know. Suddenly I've lost my confidence about that area. Gift wrapper's final... Maybe it is, though, because a gift wrapper's final touch is a bow. Nail polish brand. I don't know. Although... Buffet table item. Could be an urn. So this, this probably is bouncing ball. Kiss in Kent. Could be a snog. So... Uh, this, as, as happens occasionally, um, in Kent, which is uh, in England, in Britain, um, that indicates we're going to be using British English terminology to answer this question. And so uh, in the UK, kissing, snogging, uh, synonyms. So that's why that works. Utah's state flower. Oh, the Sego? Oh, blank, Masonic Lodge, right, Masonic Lodge. I should have should have thought of that earlier. The Masons, Fraternal Order of the Masons, whatever they're called. Deal, a, a bargain. That was quite a deal, quite a bargain. Here we here we go. This is finally happening. Oh, so super could be highly. That works. And eject forcefully. Oh, disgorge. You could, I don't know, disgorge something from your throat. Eject it forcefully. Foolish sort could be a goober. There we go. And then you're just assuming. That's a big if. Ah, yes. Yes, yes. Follow the bouncing ball does look correct. And into really, really small pieces. Oh, you could dice something finely. Dice it into very small pieces. And add salt to say it's cure, right, as meat. So you could cure meat. So this is, this is new. And then afford casually could be swing. So yeah, I could swing that. I could afford that. It would be a casual way of saying it. Nail polish brand and then start Playing for pay. Oh, go pro. You could go professional. Start playing for pay, which I suppose is technically what I've done with the crossword, although I'd really hesitate to describe this as going professional. 
Uh, ability to sustain long-term interest. Legs. You could say that really has legs. That really could sustain long-term interest. Oral history fits here. Boy, we're really finishing this off now. Sports fans cheer could be rah, 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 rah. Like the consonants T and D. And then what was this again? Not against the rules. Oh, allowed. Why didn't I think of that? Scott, who sued for his freedom. Dread Scott. Um, and an, an, uh, a very important enslaved person. Uh, very important in the abolition movement. And then sports fans cheer Olay. So, right, we have raw and Olay. Where was Ra? Oh, well, it was somewhere. It doesn't matter. PR consultant on Ted Lasso. I've seen Ted Lasso. Well, who is this? Uh, Sightline. Cooked with hot seasoning. Why do I not see the cooked with hot seasoning? Um, folk medicine practitioner. A healer, I suppose. All right. Oh, alveolar. Alveolar, like the consonants T and D. That's something to do with where they're physically happening in your mouth. T and D. I mean, they're both against the roof of your mouth, which I suppose is what that relates to. Your tongue is against the roof of your mouth there. Oh, deviled, as in deviled eggs. Interesting. I mean, I suppose deviled eggs do have paprika, which is a hot seasoning. Okay, that makes sense. And then deviled, I see you devil something, you make it hot. That that makes sense to me. Records request initials. Oh, um, FOIA, F-O-I-A, Freedom of Information Act request is, um, this is sort of thing that uh, many countries now have um, when you can... You can petition a government body, doesn't have to necessarily be the federal government for or national government for uh, records to be released. You file a Freedom of Information Act request. And Sightline, oh, I see. So I was thinking, I didn't draw attention to, uh, <laughs> I both didn't draw attention, your attention to the fact that this had a question mark for a pun or wordplay. I didn't draw my own attention to it. So Sightline is... In this case, a line being something you say rather than a literal line of sight. So you cite something and you might say, oh, look. And then that just leaves one cell to fill, which my guess is that it will be a T if I can find my mouse cursor, which I keep losing. Uh, here it is. Atacama? No, it's not. Okay. I may have... Okay, well, I shouldn't assume that's the incorrect answer. I'm going to run through the puzzle quickly. I apologize. Boy, it's been a while since this happened. Um, Shalala, I mean, that. I think that's probably correct. Sorry if you saw me enter something incorrectly and you've been e yelling at me about it. I rock. I think that's correct, Tracy. Um... Aleppo, that's correct. October... Phoneme, that's correct. A copy, I'm certain about that. Hayland, I think this is correct. This does sound familiar. Deb Hayland, I'm pretty sure that's correct. Or as for LSATs, legal, yeah, that's the legal one. Law clerks, dry, OBE. Very sorry about this. Uh, name of the game, what the hell? Uh, mower, yeah. Bargain. Alveolar. I'm pretty certain that's correct. FOIA. Follow the bouncing ball. Oh, healer is misspelled. Healer. Why did I type it that way? That was very silly. And there it is. All right. Sorry about that. Let's admire this puzzle because I think this is this is a grid to be admired. It's very it's a very nice construction. Um. Yeah. Well done. And we spelled out pachinko. So P A C H I N K O. And we have our pachinko ball following its winding and wending path down the grid. We're instructed to follow the bouncing ball, as in karaoke, for instance. So another game, I suppose, that also does have um, quite a lot of um, popularity in Asia. And then, was there anything else related to the theme? I can't quite recall. I think there was. Yes. Yes. Become clear or make like the object represented by the circled letters is something falling into place. 
And then also we had a path to victory, which the ball is following. It's a very clever, very clever puzzle and a clever grid. Just a fun, as I say, a fun Sunday grid. It's not ridiculously challenging. The theme isn't anyway. There were certainly for me anyway, some tough, some tough bits of fill in the crossword regularly, but um, not, not a, a particularly complex theme, just a sort of fun one with some, um, uh, with some illustrative elements. And so I think I'm going to, I'm going to move on. I do need to be slightly hurrying today. So I'm going to, going to move on to the, um, get my, get my answers here from yesterday's puzzle and we can discuss a few things from Saturday. So I just have two marked here. Um, I was corrected by Bice Dibley, who explained Silent Spring was a book by Rachel Carson about pesticide overuse. So I, I did correctly remember pesticides, but I think I said it was a film. I don't know. Maybe there was a film made. Maybe I was completely incorrect. In any case, it was a book by Rachel Carson focused specifically on DDT, which is now banned in many countries. So thank you, Bice Dibley, for that clarification, that correction. And Laura Sexton explains... Well, first she says, moss was one of the three words I got on my first pass uh, through the puzzle. So well done on the um, Iceland's greenery. Uh, but the, the main reason I'm highlighting this comment is that she explains the fabric is pronounced damask, not damask. I know many of you young people do not know how to pronounce it. So I'm, I'm duly chastened in that regard. And she concludes, I guess the fabric is rather out of fashion these days. Um, I suppose so. Although uh, I think it, yeah, I think it's still used maybe in less ornate with, with less ornate patterns than maybe it traditionally was, um, but indeed probably not not as not as common as it once was, which perhaps explains why my pronunciation was so poor. Um, anyway, uh, so thank you for the correction. Thank you for everybody who uh, wrote comments. I think those were the, the main corrective ones. So apologies if I missed any. Um, and that's that for today. I'm going to um, wrap this up. We got through a Sunday puzzle, maybe a little bit more quickly than we usually do. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the puzzle and the video. If you did, please do subscribe to the channel. I very much appreciate that. And if you think you know somebody who might enjoy this, pass it along to them as well. Uh, thank you to everybody who's backed the Patreon campaign at any level, and uh, quite a lot going up on there over the last few days, so I hope you've been enjoying that if you are a subscriber. In any case, thank you for joining me. I will be back tomorrow. I should be back tomorrow for the Monday puzzle, so do join me then. But until that point, please do have an excellent remainder of your Sunday. Take care.